नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का सी आई टी एन सी आर टी के लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव कार्यक्रम में मैं हूं तनवी खुराना और इस वक्त आप हमें देख रहे हैं ईद दया चैनल नंबर दस पर दसवीं कक्षा के सभी छात्र हमारे साथ इस विज्ञान की कक्षा में भाग ले सकते हैं बातचीत कर सकते हैं अपने सवाल हम तक पहुंचा सकते हैं आज जिस टॉपिक पर हम बातचीत करने वाले हैं वो है लाइफ प्रोसेसेस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन ह्यूमन बींग्स ये लाइफ प्रोसेसेस का चौथा भाग है और इससे पहले भी हम पार्ट वन पार्ट टू और पार्ट थ्री कर चुके हैं तो मैं आप सभी से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि अगर आपने पहले तीन भाग नहीं देखे हैं तो आप उन्हें ज़रूर देखिएगा हमारे YouTube चैनल एन ऑफिशियल पर इस वक्त अगर आपके पास कोई सवाल है और हम तक पहुंचाना चाहते हैं तो आप हमें फ़ोन कर सकते हैं नंबर है आठ और अगर ईमेल के माध्यम से हम तक पहुंचना चाहें तो ईमेल आईडी होगा डी टी एच डॉट क्लास वन जीरो एट द रेट सी आई ई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन हमारे साथ एक मेहमान मौजूद हैं जो हमें बहुत सारी जानकारी देंगी आज के इस विषय से जुड़ी हुई जो कि है लाइफ प्रोसेसेस तो चलिए आपका परिचय करवाना चाहेंगे हमारे मेहमान से हमारे साथ हैं सुशील कुमार जी स्वागत है सर आपका गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून सर अलीगंज लखनऊ उत्तर प्रदेश से और इससे पहले की हम ये बातचीत शुरू करें लाइफ प्रोसेस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन ह्यूमन बींग पर हम आपको एक जानकारी देना चाहेंगे जो है इंडिया की जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी से जुड़ी हुई वी आर एक्सट्रीमली प्राउड ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट इंडिया एज्यूम्ड जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी एंड वुड कन्वीन द जी ट्वेंटी लीडर्स समिट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द कंट्री दिस ईयर दैट इज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of vasudhaiva kutumbakam or should i say the world is one family Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam also translates to one earth one family one future and that is exactly the theme of this year's India's G20 presidency to chali is baat cheet ko shuru karte hain aur kyunki ye chautha bhag hai life processes ka hum fourth part ko shuru karne se pehle sir se request karenge ki sir kya humne jo teesre bhag mein padhai kari thi uska chhota sa recap aap hamare darshakon ko dena chahenge yes definitely ma'am so dear students in the previous session we have discussed about the digestive system or the process which help in giving us the nutrition as well as we have discussed about the different kind of the uh, uh, nutrition providing mechanism either autotrophic or heterotrophic or saprophytic or parasitic and in the last time we have discussed about the human respiratory system so as the human respiratory system is concerned it is consisting of uh, the the if we take the air that is the oxygen rich air from the environment and it reaches in our nasal passage or nasal to through the nasal cavity it reaches through the nasal passage to the pharynx and there after the trachea that is the wind pipe and there after it reaches in the bronchi and bronchioles and ultimately reaches in the alveoli and uh, oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchanged at the alveoli takes place through the bronchioles and uh, co the carbon dioxide is diffused outside of the cell and uh, from the blood vessel it reaches to bronchiole and bronchia and there after the trachea and pharynx and nasal cavity and carbon dioxide this air is released into the environment so we have discussed in detail about it and uh, the whole process is facilitated by the muscular structure that is known as diaphragm because the movement of the diaphragm help in, in the respiratory process as well as we have also discussed about the various fate of the food we take that is the how the our food is oxidized in our body either in, in, through the aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration so uh, we have um, in detail discussed about it today we will discuss about that uh, there are some 
important information related with the respiratory system that is so many people are addicted to the smoking and we all know that smoking is injurious to the health and it leads to the lung cancer and my student lung cancer is one of the common cause of the death in the world the upper part of respiratory tract is provided with small hair like structure called cilia these cilia help to remove germ dust and other harmful particles from the uh, inhaled air when we do the smoking so smoking destroy these cilia or hair like process due to which germ dust smoke and other harmful chemical enter in the lungs and cause the infection cough and even lung cancer my students in the previous month that is the in the month of the may we have celebrated on the 31st of the may is the world no tobacco day that is it is the day to we take oath that tobacco either in the form of cigar cigarette beedi hookah and gutka is highly harmful or injurious to the health use of tobacco most commonly affect the tongue lungs heart and liver smoke less tobacco is also a major risk factor for the heart attack strokes pulmonary disease and several form of cancer there is high incidence of the oral cancer in our country being reported due to the chewing of the tobacco especially in the rural areas and so it is our duty to make sensitize those people to remain away from the chewing the tobacco or inhaling the tobacco in any form so stay healthy just say no to tobacco and its product so this is all about of the uh, previous uh, session okay. and uh, today so before we, we before yes, we begin uh, the transportation in human beings i would like to ask a few questions uh, regarding what we studied earlier we have received a certain questions so may i yes ma'am yes Okay. Uh, the first Please. question is uh, why the rate of breathing in aquatic animals, aquatic organisms, is much faster than the terrestrial organisms? Okay, so uh, dear students, uh, as you will be well aware that in the atmosphere there is around twenty-one percent of oxygen is found. So we people or, or other terrestrial animal that lives on the earth takes this oxygen from the air, but when we are talking about the aquatic animal so aquatic animal are those animal which lives in the water so they so take they usually take the oxygen from the water that the oxygen that is dissolved in the water so it is seen that the oxygen that is dissolved in the water is quite less in comparison to the oxygen present in the atmosphere that is why to fulfill its demand of the oxygen they usually breathe faster Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. So uh, it has been seen that uh, after finishing the race, uh, an athlete, uh, he or she breathes uh, higher and deeper and faster than his usual breathing. Why? What's the reason behind that? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, dear students, you all are well aware that we usually uh, get the energy when our food is. Combustion, uh, do the combustion, or when it it, it get uh, uh, burnt in our cell, and due to which the energy we people get. So when an athlete is uh, running on the track, so he requires so much of the energy. So for this, he usually do the breathing faster. So, uh, but uh, the demand of oxygen. is not fulfilled at that time and anaerobic respiration starts so as soon as he finishes the line so when just after finishing the line so the rate rate of the breathing is more much more higher because he want to take the much much more oxygen from the atmosphere to fulfill the demand of energy okay all right that yes. actually makes yes. sense um so yes, whenever someone just inhales the uh, dust laden air they end up sneezing why is that 
Yes, sir. so ma'am, when we, we people usually pass through any area where there is a lot of pollution or air is full of pollen grain or air carrying the dust particle, so when we inhale such air, so air reaches through our nostril into the uh, nasal passage, and in our nasal passage there are so many small hair-like structure is found as well as the membrane is highly sensitive. So when these, these dust particles when create disturbance in the hair as well as create irritation in our nasal passage, it results in a forceful expiration or sneezing takes place. So we can say that sneezing is a mechanism by which our body wants to expel the dust particle or pollen grain or any foreign substance that is to want to enter in our nasal passage. Okay. All right. Sir, uh, would you like to tell us that uh, what are alveoli and uh, which disease destroys the alveoli? Yes. So, uh, dear students, you all are well aware that uh, our respiratory system starts from the uh, nasal opening and uh, it usually uh, uh, in at the alveoli. So, uh, we can say that the nasal opening leads into the pharynx, thereafter the trachea, that is the windpipe, thereafter the bronchi and bronchiole, and in the end, or it, the bronchiole terminate at the alveoli. So, we can say the alveoli are the structural and functional unit of our lungs. So, there are millions of the alveoli are found in our lungs. अब बच्चों अगर हम आपको बताएं अगर हम सारे एलुलाई को अपने फेफड़ों की दोनों एलुलाई को अगर फैला दें तो समझिए इतना ज्यादा सरफेस एरिया हो जाएगा जितना आपका एक टेनिस कोर्ट के बराबर तो जो जो पूरा का पूरा ये परपज होता है एलुलाई होने की वजह से हमारा सरफेस एरिया है जिसके द्वारा ऑक्सीजन और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड का बीच में एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस जो होता है हमारे फेफड़ों में तो वो एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेस के लिए सरफेस एरिया बढ़ जाता है सो द पर्पज ऑफ द एलोलाई टू इंक्रीज द सरफेस एरिया ऑफ द लंग्स अब सवाल उठता है कि जब कोई व्यक्ति स्मोकिंग करता है समझिए सिगरेट बीड़ी होक्का या कोई भी इस प्रकार की प्रैक्टिस करता है तो जब वो टोबैको स्मोकिंग करता है तो वो टोबैको स्मोकिंग की वजह से उनकी जो एलोलाई है वो धीरे धीरे डैमेज होने लगती है इसकी वजह से एलोलाई की संख्या बहुत कम हो जाती है और ऐसी स्थिति में उस व्यक्ति को सेलो ब्रीदिंग की कंडीशन हो जाती है आमतौर पे हम और आप लोग डीप ब्रीदिंग करते हैं लेकिन ऐसे व्यक्ति में सेलो ब्रीदिंग होने लगती है और फाइनली एक कंडीशन उनमें पैदा हो जाती है जिसे कहते हैं इम्फाइसिमा इम्फाइसिमा इज ए मेडिकल वर्ड डेट इज यूजली यूज पेन सिगरेट स्मोकर और चेन स्मोकर रिमेन Continue to do the smoking, so in the future he or she will get suffer from the emphysema. Oh, okay. Uh, like you said that uh, smoking is injurious to health, so I'm sure uh, nobody is going to smoke in the future because it is uh, very harmful for our bodies. Um, so yes. going uh, with the conversation now that uh, we are talking about uh, life processes the fourth part transportation to human beings would you like to tell us that uh, what is the focus of our today's uh, you know um, discussion yes so uh, as the transportation is concerned so our students are well aware that in class 9 you have studied about there is a fluid connective tissue is found in our body that is known as blood. So usually blood transport food, oxygen and waste material in our body. And blood has a fluid medium called plasma in which various cells are suspended. Our students are well aware that there are the cells like red blood cells that is known as RBC. There are the cells known as WBC or white blood cells or leukocytes as well as blood platelets are found in them. In the blood, since plasma constitutes the fluid medium and plasma transport food, carbon dioxide, as well as nitrogen waste in dissolved form. 
ऑक्सीजन इज कैरीड बाय द आरबीसी विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए पिगमेंट नोन एज हीमोग्लोबिन मेनी अदर सब्सटेंसेस लाइक साल्ट आर आल्सो ट्रांसपोर्टेड बाय द ब्लड सो वी दस नीड ए पंपिंग ऑर्गन टू पुश ब्लड अराउंड द बॉडी through the network of the tube to reach all the tissue and the system is developed that is known as transportation system or blood circulatory system it is usually made up of the various organ that that may consist of the heart as well as there are some vessels or blood vessels are found so heart remains is active throughout the life it is a pumping organ that pushes blood around the body delivering oxygen to the respiring cell vessels that are the blood vessels are the arteries or veins provide a transport system for blood it uh, ensuring the one way flow so as the heart is concerned uh, suppose our heart is structurally is a structure that looks like a fist hamari mutthi ke barabar hota hai around 300 g iska weight hota hai aur it is situated slightly left of our body hamare baaye haath ki taraf dono phepron ke beech mein ke ye paya jata hai slightly left side ki taraf ye tilt hota hai it is a muscular organ and mesodermal in origin means it arises from the mesodermal layer or mesodermal germ germinal layer during the embryonic condition because both oxygen and carbon dioxide have to be transported by the blood so heart has different chamber to prevent the oxygen rich blood from mixing with the blood containing carbon dioxide hamare hindi medium ke jo bachche sun rahe hain unko hum batana chahenge ki hamare hriday mein चार कमरे होते हैं या हम कह सकते हैं देर आर फोर चैम्बर हमारे हृदय में चार चैम्बर होते हैं और ये चैम्बर एक दूसरे से सेपरेट होते हैं जिसकी वजह से ऑक्सीजनेटेड अर्थात ऑक्सीजन वाला ब्लड और डीऑक्सीजनेटेड अर्थात कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड रिच ब्लड को एक दूसरे से मिक्स होने से रोका जाता है आप सब बच्चे जानते होंगे कि हमारी बॉडी बहुत सारी कोशिकाओं से बनती है और कई सारी कोशिकाएं मिलती है जिनकी सिमिलर स्ट्रक्चर फंक्शन एज वेल एज ओरिजिन होती है वो टिश्यू बनाते हैं और कई सारे टिश्यू मिलके ऑर्गन और कई सारे ऑर्गन मिलके ऑर्गन सिस्टम को फाइनली एक ऑर्गेन में बनता है तो ये हमारी बॉडी में ये जो एक हर्ट एक बहुत ही कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गन है आप सब बच्चे जानते होंगे कि हम और आप इंसान और जो भी मेमेंट्स है ये हमारे धरती पर पाए जाने वाले सबसे एडवांस ऑर्गेनिज्म हैं। हमारे आसपास ऐसे और भी सिंपल ऑर्गेनिज्म पाए जाते हैं जैसे कि अमीबा और आप देख पा रहे होंगे दूसरा ऑर्गेनिज्म जैसे हम हाइड्रा तीसरा स्पॉन्ज आप देख पा रहे होंगे या फ्लैटवॉर्म ये अलग अलग ऑर्गेनिज्म हैं। ये बहुत सिंपल ऑर्गेनिज्म होते हैं इनमें सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम या वेल well डिफाइंड हाइट एज वेल एज ब्लड वेस्टर्स नहीं पाए जाते क्योंकि ये ऑर्गेनिज्म बहुत सिंपल होते हैं साइज में छोटे होते हैं और ये सीधे सीधे डिफ्यूजन के माध्यम से अपने शरीर में जगह जगह न्यूट्रिएंट्स या गैसेस एक्सचेंज करने में एक अपनी इस प्रोसेस को करते रहते हैं उसके अलावा कुछ ऐसे ऑर्गेनिज्म होते हैं जिनमें ओपन एंड क्लोज सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम पाया जाता है जैसे अगर हम इंसेक्ट में पहुंचे या फाइलम आइफोपोडा में देखें तो वहां पर ओपन ब्लड सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम पाया जाता है ओपन ब्लड सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम का मतलब बच्चों इस प्रकार से है कि जो ब्लड है वो क्लोज नेटवर्क में नहीं बहता है मतलब जो ऐसे एनिमल्स डायरेक्टली इन, इनके जो ऑर्गन्स होते हैं ये एक प्रकार के फ्लूड में सीधे सीधे तैरते रहते हैं या बने रहते हैं और वहां से ये गैसेस एक्सचेंज करते हैं जैसे इंसेक्ट के केस में ऐसे फ्लूड को हम हीमोलिम्फ कहते हैं दूसरी तरफ अगर हम देखें आइथोपोडा के कंट्रेरी अगर हम व्हाइट वेट में देखें तो व्हाइट वेट में अगर हम देखते हैं तो देयर इज डिफाइंड हाइट एज वेल एज 
there are so many blood vessel and high ten blood vessel join to form a closed network so this is known as circulatory system usually open blood circulatory system is found in invertebrate but in case of earthworm the closed blood circulatory system is found so you should remember in case of earthworm or in phylum annelida closed blood circulatory system is found and in the fishes reptiles birds mammal amphibia in all these phylum organism the closed circulatory system is found so let us move to the next uh, slide as uh, as the blood is flowing in a closed network of the blood vessel so uh, you should know that in the human being the blood is flowed in a arteries as well as in the veins and i would like to show you in the next slide okay yes if uh, there is some problem no issues since we are moving to the next slide i would like to ask you um a very uh, interesting question which i have received uh, so you just showed uh, the heart pumping and that was the human heart right uh, but yes. then uh, every animal every reptile every fish every amphibian they all have a heart in their bodies uh, so yes. uh, can we say that the structure of the heart is same in each and every uh, no animal in every organism yes ma'am so every organism like you have uh, mentioned like fishes like amphibia like reptile like mammals so these all organism having the heart hmm. but the heart of these organism is quite different from our heart okay. for example in case of fishes hmm. there is heart that is only two chambered heart hmm. but in case of uh, amphibia like frog mm-hmm. so heart is three chambered heart okay so there are two atrium and one ventricle mm-hmm. in case of the reptiles so there is three chambered heart but in case of the crocodile there is the four chambered heart in case of the birds and mammal there are the four chambered in the heart so the heart as as soon as the organism become complex the heart has also developed and in the mammals like we people have the four chambered heart and the fishes have two chambered frog or amphibia have three chambered reptile have three chambered but in the reptile there is exception the crocodile have four chambered and birds and mammal have four chambered heart so uh, i am hoping that my powerpoint is now being shared with you yes sir yes so sir we can there, see each and every uh, image very clearly yeah so there are the two chambers mm-hmm. that are known as auricular as well as two chamber that are known as ventricular so upper two chamber are known as auricular one is known as left atrium another known as right atrium and so in the latin atrium means a hallway a space into which more space open so similarly there are two ventricle and these left atrium right atrium left ventricle right ventricle all constitute the four chambered heart and all the chambered like the right atrium and right ventricle as well as right and left chamber are divided by a wall called the septum so each of the chamber has a blood vessel linked to it so this means there are the four major vessel that transport blood into and out of the heart there is the aorta another one is the vena cava third one is the pulmonary artery and fourth one is the pulmonary vein blood enter the heart through the veins connected to the 
Austria. So uh, they are is in the Latin language pulmonary. Pulmonary is the Latin word for the lungs. So students, you can guess where the blood in these vessels are going to and from. So there is the pulmonary vein and pulmonary vein. Now you will be able to uh, uh, give the answer that pulmonary vein is related with the directly related with the lungs. There is the vena cava. So vena cava in the Latin language is the meaning of the vena cava is hollow vein. Now I would like to show you that uh, there are uh, a definite system like any other muscle, the heart wall also need oxygen to work and to receive oxygen, the heart has its own blood supply. These vessels emerge on the outer surface of the heart and are called coronary vessels. So my friend, you have heard about some diseases of the heart disease that are known as cardiac disease or heart disease. So if a coronary artery becomes narrowed or blocked in due to the built up the fatty deposit, the cells of the heart or muscle supplied by that artery will die. And uh, this muscle injury can cause a heart attack or First of all, the angina palpebris due to the lack of oxygen and nutrient. There is a pain in the heart muscle takes place and thereafter the cardiac arrest takes place. So together the heart and blood vessel form the circulatory system and each side of the heart is like a separate pump. This creates the two circuit of the blood from the heart. One is known as pulmonary circuit or lung circuit, another known as body circuit or we can say that the systemic, systemic circulation. So there are so many valves are also present in the blood vessel as well as in the heart. So there are the four valves present in the heart and the purpose of the valve is to help in the flow of the blood in one direction. So the valve open to let blood into the chamber or vessel and close to prevent blood flowing backward. So many times due to the congenital purpose or by birth or uh, in the future, in the lifetime, some infection causes the valve disease, which is a fatal condition. Okay. So uh, this slide is showing the different valve and one is the atrioventricular valve and another one is the semilunar valve. So similar valves are made up of the three pocket or cusp. That is why it is known as tricuspid valve. As well as atrioventricular valve is made up of two or three cusp. That is why it is known as bicuspid valve. So okay. in the class 11, you will uh, able to know in detail about these valves. Uh, as we have discussed, my student, that our heart consists of the atrium as well as ventricle. But it is seen that the wall of the left ventricle is much more thicker than the right ventricle. Okay. So, other part of the heart. Sir, as, so the sir this, as we don't have much time left, uh, could you please wrap it up? Maybe we can take it in our another session. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, uh, I have one or two minutes or not? No, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, we will continue the same topic in the next session for sure. Uh, till then, uh, we will uh, wrap up with this information. Thank you so much, sir, for being a part of our program today. It was wonderful having you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you to all the children for being with us. We discussed at length life processes, transportation in human beings and uh, there is a lot of uh, knowledge that we need to know regarding the human heart and uh, it has chambers, the blood flows through it and a lot more. So we will continue the same session in the next uh, part for sure. Till then uh, keep on watching eVidya channels. We have a lot of programs for you. Upcoming next program is uh, an Urdu class for all the 10th class children. So keep on watching our sessions. We have a lot of topics, a lot of subjects for all of you. Before leaving, I have information regarding the NCRT textbooks for the new academic session. If you have not purchased them yet, 
please go and purchase them directly from the sales counter from 9.30 to 6 p.m. and uh, the locations are New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Guwahati and Bangalore. So, either you can uh, purchase them directly or you can simply download the PDF versions uh, from the NCRT, Deeksha or ePartshala website and their mobile applications. If in case you want to download, uh, you want to place an order through the website, the website would be ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in. Place an order and you will receive uh, the textbooks at your doorstep in no time. So that is all the information regarding NCRT textbooks. My name is Tanvi Khurana. I hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you so much. Take care. Namaskar.